With the Polestar 4 just unveiled, I thought it would be cool to see the differences between the Polestar 4 and its direct competitor in the Tesla lineup, the Model Y. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to compare the designs from front, side, rear, and interior. And then I'm going to let you know which one I personally would buy if I was in a market for either one of these. So let's have a look at some of the spec and tech of these two cars. First of all, this is a mashable article right here. The Polestar 4, according to the company, is an electric performance SUV coupe. It's spacious and just tall enough still to be called an SUV. No, it's not. This is not an SUV. Maximum power output of 400 kilowatt or 544 horsepower. Zero to 60 time of around 3.8 seconds. Yes, the Tesla Model Y, an obvious competitor to the Polestar 4, is a little bit faster. Just a tiny bit. 3.5 seconds to 60. So 0.3 seconds faster. I doubt you're going to feel the differences when you floor any of these cars. So the Polestar 4 will be offered with one or two motors. The single range, long range version will have a rear wheel drive, 272 horsepower power output and a preliminary WLTP range of 600 kilometers. With the dual motor, the long range version will have a slightly shorter 560 kilometer range, around 350 miles. So if it's just a difference of about 20 to 25 miles, I think I would probably go with a dual motor in this case. You also have a 200 kilowatt to DC fast charging available inside you get a 15.4 inch screen at the center of the dashboard a 10.2 inch the driver display and a 14.7 inch head-up display that sounds like a pretty substantial head-up display and you have an optional audio system with 12 speakers notably the center display is landscape oriented unlike the portrait oriented display in the also recently unveiled Polestar 3 so let's have a look at the Tesla for comparison so this is a 2023 Tesla Model Y article by car and driver both of these articles can be found down in the description if you want to go check them out yourself so new for 2023 we, we have the the base Model Y is back with 200 79 horse uh, miles of range and it's coming for 2023 i think that's great because it used to have be there when i was looking at these cars way back maybe three or four years ago and then it disappeared and then it was like uh, one of these secret models that you could contact tesla ask do you have any base models in their inventory and maybe you could find one but now they're actually officially back on the website so you have the long range and the performance models over 330 and 303 miles of range respectively which is great for the performance model but it seems like the Volvo is going to be better than this even with the Volvo or, or, or the Polestar uh, 4 is going to be better than this even with their performance model so you have all-wheel drive for the long range which is zipped from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 4.4 seconds performance Y delivered an even quicker 3.6 second blast to 60 so cars are becoming quick even though uh, you're not gonna hear anything from the from an engine you just step on the gas and boom all of a sudden and you're up at 60 in in three and a half seconds in these suvs these days it's nuts they all will drive long range over 330 miles of range for the wheels the performance comes with 20 inch wheels which is incorrect uh, the model y performance actually has 21 inch wheels the model 3 performance comes with 20 inch wheels so this is incorrect here in this article and you have a lower suspension than a higher top speed 155 miles per hour and you get a dedicated track mode you get that in the tesla model 3 performance as well the entry level model comes with a different battery pack than the other two and its range is lower at 279 miles of range which i think is pretty good still for a base model so let's have a look at what really matters here let's have a look at this design and the design of the polestar 4 versus the tesla Model Y. I'm not sure why they call the, the Polestar 4 an SUV because to me it doesn't look like an SUV, it just doesn't. The Model Y though, it, this I can see being an SUV but it still sits very low. We have a very um, like uh, blurry definition of what an SUV is these days. I think Vol uh, Polestar, I keep saying Volvo, Polestar wants to call this an SUV just for marketing purposes. If they were gonna call it a sedan for example or a hatchback, people in the United States would go crazy because they don't want to buy those type of vehicles. But if they just add the name SUV on there, it becomes a lot more attractive. So the Tesla Model Y design here, I mean, we don't really have to talk a lot about this because we 
we've seen this so many times for so long now there is really nothing new going on in the Tesla design I do still think it's a pretty good looking car it's a very conservative car when it comes to the design and the styling of it and that is because as I've said before Tesla knew from the beginning when they were developing this car that this is going to have to be in production for a very very long time so they didn't want to do any crazy designs to it but now the Tesla Model 3 the next generation has supposedly leaked and that looks even more conservative than the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3's front face right now it's gonna be interesting to see if that's actually what it will look like when it comes out but overall very smooth design we have this duck face in the front end and we have some sporty lines in the side of the car going into the front end which I really like I do think these graphics they work a little better on the Tesla Model 3 but that's just me looking at these it feels like they just stretched out a Tesla Model 3 and that created some problems in the proportions of the Model Y. But looking at the Polestar 4, this is just a beautiful looking car and it looks a lot more modern than the Tesla Model Y because we have some more styling features in here that actually has an identity in the car and creates very sharp and strict lines. As I said in the Polestar 4 video, this is like an, a product design feel to it, meaning there's a lot of uh, parallel lines and there is a lot of flat surfaces not a lot of flowing surfaces and emotional design in this but there's still a couple of key lines that creates this automotive feel in this otherwise very product design styling that we have in the Polestar. And I think that is essentially Polestar's design philosophy, to mix product design with a bit of sprinkle of a couple of lines that adds this automotive design uh, treatment to it. I do like these new daytime running lights that we have coming from Volvo and old Polestar models where we have one Thor's hammer just being attached like this. They're now split so we have two different sections of the Thor's hammer it still has the same uh, kind of identity if you look at this at night and then we have these lines on the hood this is what I'm talking about here we see some of this automotive design feel with these lines and the fenders creating more sporty look the lower part looks super clean too we have this pla black plastic uh, cladding down here I think this has to be plastic with a big grill in the front end this grill looks a lot bigger than uh, what I'm used to seeing on EVs for example compare it to the Tesla Model Y up here with a tiny little mouth. Both of these cars look very good. If both of these were new, it's kind of hard to think about the Tesla Model Y being completely new as a design because I've, we've seen it so many times. But if I were to look at these, they are two very different design philosophies, very flowy automotive styling in the Tesla. Well, as I said, the, the Polestar feels more like a product design with a sprinkle of automotive design in it. We can see that more clearly here. I think the side view is probably the best view for these two cars. And this is what I'm talking about. This can definitely be categorized as an SUV because it sits pretty high here. And we have some uh, plastic around the wheel arches and in the lower part of the car. But the, the automotive design in the Teslas are intact because we have these flowing lines and in, in combination with this smooth surfacing that we have all around the car. And in addition to this, typical automotive line at the bottom that then goes in right here into the bumper and I love this performance wing ducktail that we have in the rear really sends the design off in a pretty nice way just swinging it up back there in the rear and as I said these are 21 inch wheels these are not 20 inch wheels on the Tesla Model Y performance I still like the design of these wheels these turbine looking uh, style to me it's almost becoming one of these uh, Audi RS wheels that the wheels are a very important part of the overall design of the car and I think these are actually heading towards that kind of feel. Looking at the Volvo, again, a lot more stricter proportions and sharper lines with this almost Daniel Simon style to the, the graphics and everything that goes on. And that's why I love it. I'm a huge fan of Daniel Simon. He's an entertainment designer. He made the uh, vehicle designs, for example, for Oblivion. And he made the, e the, the Tron bikes in, in that movie. Just fantastic designs. And I think this has a lot of that vibe to it the Polestar designs and look at this this is an interesting little detail in the Tesla we have the camera right here as a triangle in the Polestar it sticks out pretty noticeably this detail is sort of a representation of the overall design philosophies of these two brands here it's very boxy 
square, strict, horizontal and vertical, parallel. Well, in the Tesla, they added some emotion, some styling to the camera itself. Very cool to see the different implementation of the same camera in the same position. I really like this design, the, the Polestar 4 design. I think it's a beautiful car. It's not an SUV. I'm not even sure if it's a hatchback or a, or a sedan, if we were not to call it an SUV. It looks like a cut line goes right here, but it's a very, very clean design. I love the taillight graphics in combination with the split Thor's hammer in the front end. It feels fresh, it feels new, and it definitely feels Polestar. So let's have a look at the rear view of these two cars as well before I have a look at the interior. I think I take it back. I think actually the, the, the quarter, three quarter rear view of the Tesla Model Y is the best view for this. I love this integration of this spoiler in the back. It just looks so good and it's a very automotive design for this uh, detail up here. And then we have a pretty clear looking bumper. Very conservative design in the rear end similar to what we have in the front but I think it's even more conservative in the, in the back for some reason and I also love this beautiful shoulder that we have here from a side view it does have a bit of a bubbly design to it but overall they broke that bubbliness up with some very beautiful key lines we also have a sharp line right here in in the front fender heading into the door handle it kind of fades in this area I don't know the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3 from a rear view has always looked really good to me and they still do today they still look modern today because the graphics are updated to be LEDs, full LED bars, not any like small bulbs like this, like we had in the Model S for the longest time. I think they just updated that last year and it just took the Model S rear end design to a whole new level when they introduced the new taillights for the Model S, which I wanted to see back in 2018. So looking at the rear end of the Polestar 4, same thing here. It's just a gorgeous design and have a look at all the chamfers going on in the rear end. We have this beautiful chamfer up top then we have this beautiful chamfer down at the bottom kind of having a foundation for the tail end graphics reminds me a little bit of the Porsche Taycan and then we have another chamfer right here so these chamfers creates a very very modern look for the Polestar 4 we have the same kind of treatment in the rear fender like we have in the Tesla so this sharp line here comes back in the Polestar as well and I really like that adding a few sharp lines where you want them to be positioned if you want to have a clear sporty car design and one of those sharp lines that you need to have is this one right here right above the rear axle creating a muscle over this wheel and separates it from it being a complete product design What's interesting here too, you don't have the rear window for the passengers. Instead, you have this high definition camera that sends a live feed to the rear mirror. It's, it's an interesting approach. Overall, it feels like a very nice car, very cool play with graphics here. For example, to cut out this mass in the lower part of the Polestar, to have this uh, very thin waist, creating a sportier look for this SUV. So let's have a look at the interiors here. And this is where it gets a little bit disappointing because you know, I, I don't think interior designs are what they used to be anymore. They, they don't have the same kind of vibe and quality feel and pride in the craftsmanship like they used to have. Now we have this, you know, the, the Tesla interior is a perfect example of what's going on in today's interiors. And that is, it just have put a big screen up here. Don't care about the integration of the screen. And then we have a steering wheel. It's pretty boring in my opinion. This is an interior that Tesla definitely needs to update. They need to come out with something new. They did make a, few, a tiny little change and that is to add this trim piece for 2022 model year but that's not big of a change to uh, for, for a vehicle that's been out since 2018 the Tesla Model 3 for example still a very functional interior but look at this armrest there's nothing interesting going on it's just a block of black leather that sits right here no interesting designs no different textures or, or patterns in the, le the leather that would make it interesting to touch and feel and look at it's just a plain interior as I, was, as I said it's functional but very very plain first of all we have a gauge cluster right here which is nice even though it's not the best integrated one then we have this landscape oriented infotainment screen which looks very similar to the Tesla's with a with the same kind of format looks like we have some vents down here are these vents or what are these things some detail down here at least that makes it a little bit more interesting to look at and this is what I'm talking about just have a couple of things like this you see this section 
position here, something is going on in the armrest here or in the center console that makes it more interesting to be in. Same thing with the doors. We have these solar system or whatever they call it, inspired uh, ambient lighting in the, in the interior looking really nice. Steering wheel looks a lot nicer than the boring simple steering wheel that we have in the Tesla. Everything on the interior of the Polestar 4 is just a win for me in this comparison. I still think it looks too plain. I would like to come back to the, for example, the C40 recharge interiors. I like those a lot better than what we have in the Polestars and pretty much every single EV these days. So which one of these would I buy if I were in the market for any of these two cars? They say the Polestar 4 is going to land around $67,000, which is a lot more than the base uh, Model Y, but still it feels like a good premium to pay for this design, both in the exterior and the interior. The Tesla Model Ys and the Model 3s and pretty much every single Tesla that's out now feel like they've been around forever. There is nothing really exciting about them anymore. And we're still waiting on the Tesla Roadster and the Tesla Cybertruck. I'm not sure when they're going to come and put them into production. So for this reason, I would go for the Polestar 4 and probably choose the dual motor option, even though it's going to drop the range to about 350 miles, which is still similar to what we have in the Tesla Model Y long range. So for me, it's going to be the Polestar 4.